background, last week at my friend's farm, northern Illinois. It's a large plot with a forest to the north, our bonfire was near his barn, about 100 feet from the woods, with crops to the west and south. Twelve of us at the bonfire. We're all around 15 years old and five of us, myself included, own a FOID card, required to possess or purchase firearms. Story, the bonfire is going as planned, and at around 10 p.m. we light it up. All of us are chatting and having fun when one of my friends stops everyone. That friend was sitting near the crops. Listen. Everyone shuts up and we hear a really strange noise coming from the field. It's nearly impossible to describe perfectly, but it was a really deep hissing noise. Like if a large dog could hiss, it'd sound like that creature. My friend, who we'll call T, shines a flashlight toward there. From that distance, the light was hazy, but we saw a figure about 30 feet away from the fire. It was on all fours, about five feet long. It had large, powerful looking hind legs coupled with feet that had claws, small but they looked lethal. But its front legs were long and stringy, with much more menacing claws. It was covered with fur, and its head was dog-like with large canines visible. The creature's eyes were deep blue and reflected the light. The party right now is struggling to comprehend what's happening. Most of us are just staring at the creature, which in turn is staring back at us. This continued for at least a minute until T comes to his senses. I'm gonna sneak back to the house and grab my guns, yell if the thing does anything weird. T leaves and the creature watches, its eyes following T as he enters the house. At this point, we have three flashlights on it and it's perfectly visible to us. Two minutes later the door opens and T comes out with two. 22s and a 9mm. The creature sees T and gets on its hind legs, I'm assuming it's a biped that was sitting down at the field, running toward the woods with a huge gait. Now the thing looks at least 6 feet tall. T hands me the 9mm and hands my other friend, ah, the second point two two. The creature's 20 feet out from the forest and T shoots at it missing. R stays at the fire while I and T go after it, only now I realize how stupid we are. The thing's at the foot of the forest, and it climbs up a tree. We both stop and fire a few more shots into the trees. We walk back and everyone decided to call their parents and finish it up early. Our excuse was a small downpour had started and we had to finish early. No one's talking about it, and we're not planning on telling our parents. T's parents led two more hunting trips, with bows and arrows due to the strict gun laws, but we didn't find anything. The tracks it left were washed away during a harsh storm. So two questions. What the hell did we see and has anyone else seen it? Also, I typed this on the phone so excuse some grammar issues that may arise, I'll edit it when I get access to a computer. I live in a small village in rural England. It's a sleepy little place, but for all that it has a quite a rich history. There's an old castle some ways away that was owned by a feudal lord in the Middle Ages, and legends about the castle and the surrounding countryside about. My favorite legend is the one about the lord and his illicit lady lovers. It's a great story of guilt, revenge, and adventure and I don't believe a word of it. My friend Sam, on the other hand, his favorite story is the one about the wolf. Legend has it that over 300 years ago the Lord's eldest son was out hunting when he was set upon by a monstrous hound. It knocked the boy from his horse, crippling him on impact, and then fled into the woods. The Lord's men who had been accompanying the boy had chased after it, 
with just one man staying behind to guard the lad. When the Lord's men returned to the spot where the accident took place, having failed to locate the wolf, there was no one there. Neither lad nor soldier, just a trail of blood and signs of a struggle. The young man was never seen again after that point, but ever since, there have been rumors and whispers of a midnight black wolf that haunts the full moons of our quaint little countryside. It's just a story but Sam, he believes it. He loves the story, and he loves the imagery of the wolf. One Halloween Sam decided to dress up as the wolf from the legend. He was really excited because this Halloween was actually going to occur on a full moon as well. Now I know what you're thinking. Clearly, this story will end up with me mistaking the real werewolf for Sam in his costume at some point. How cliché. Let me assure you that that did not happen, it couldn't have. Sam's costume was good, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't good enough to mistake for the werewolf from the story. It wasn't bulky enough, and the mask, which was really just a motorcycle helmet with lots of cardboard and fake fur all over it, wasn't expressive or lively enough for that. The rest of his costume was alright I guess. He had gotten a lot of dark clothing and covered every part of it in fake fur. Honestly, he really had gone to a lot of effort with the whole thing. What really impressed me was the attention to detail he had used. The cardboard teeth had little droplets of blood painted onto them. He had a tail made from a wire brush that he'd made look pretty authentic and he walked around in a hunched manner, like he was some bizarre, lupine homunculus, struggling with the beast that lay within him. It was obvious that it was a costume, but you had to hand it to him, the costume did look like a werewolf ought to look. It sort of put me off my lunch, to be honest, I mean it really is quite weird when you eat someone who looks so much like yourself.